Well, Manchester United were back among the trophies last season, but it's the Premier League title they're desperate to fight for again. Their challenge starts here at Old Trafford today, where they let just too many points slip last season. Ten draws. Well, West Ham are their first opponents. Finished 11th, but start with greater ambition this time round after reshaping their squad through a very busy summer window. And there's one of them. Two of them, in fact. Both start today. Three. Have a letter as well. Have a look in a moment. United's team sees five changes. The side beaten by Real Madrid on Tuesday in the Super Cup. Jones and Bailly, the starting centre half. Splinter left back. Matter and Rashford also start. And Premier League debuts in a United shirt for Nemanja Matic and Romelu Lukaku. Four new boys line up for West Ham then. Joe Hart and Pablo Zabaleta guaranteed a warm welcome here, aren't they, with their City links, plus record signing Marco Arnautovic and a former Manchester United favourite leading the line, Javier Hernandez. A word from both managers, Slaven Bilic and Jose Mourinho, with Jeff Shreves. Jose, you said on Friday you're on fire and cannot wait. Will your team be today? <laughs> that was a joke. I was just... Uh... Having a laugh with with the journalists at the training grounds, but um, I'm happy to start. We like we like to play. We like Premier League. We like the opening match. So let's let's enjoy. And honestly, as um, as a spectator, as a fan, I've enjoyed the Friday match. I've enjoyed some Saturday matches that I also had the chance to to have a look. So hopefully today we can keep giving good football and um, entertaining times for the people that love football in this country. What do you think will be key for you to get a positive result today? First of all, we have to be good without the ball. Uh, we have to be compact, we have to be solid. We can't have, uh, let them have a have, uh, ball behind us or ball in the pockets. If they have a ball, they can have it in front of us that we control and all that. It's very important to have the distance between your players, not to be too, too much because of those pockets uh, between the lines. And of course, when we have a ball, try to frustrate them with, keep them, with keeping the ball if necessary, and uh, try to be little and, and try to stretch them when we have a ball. And that's, that's on a paper, of course, but a lot of times we've done it and uh, we have the players on the pitch who are capable of doing it, and that's the key, of course. With what you have at the moment, do you think you have enough to mount a genuine assault on the title? Uh, we have enough to go to this match and, and, and to, to, to say clearly we want to win it. I don't know if we, if we are going to do it, because West Ham will fight for the results and every opponent is difficult, but we have enough to, to say today and in every match, we go to this match and we want to win. Well, he frowned and scowled his way through pretty much every interview we saw him last year. Is this the new happy Jose again, Alan? Well, he looks confident and, he, and, he, and you know, he has good reason to be confident because he has Lukaku at the top of the pitch, proven goal scorer in the Premier League. And more importantly for me, he has Matic in the middle of the pitch protecting that back four. Somebody he trusts and knows. And uh, you can see a renewed confidence in him and hopefully it'll be shown in the pitch today. Has he got a squad now, Graham, to fight for the title? I think so. I think... Um... When you go through the names, you know they don't have the superstar, but they've got some fabulous players. Um, and they can mix it up when one form of attack doesn't work for them, they can mix it up. And when we see that, he'll bring Fellaini on and he's, and he's not reluctant to go along at the right time, which I, I think is missing from, I'm not suggesting you go like that all the time in every game you play, but there's an area for that. I think a lot of our football's come a little bit too much possession based. And I think getting it forward quickly at times works. Um, I think United will be a challenge. I think they might just be short when push comes to shove because I think the better teams might just be able to deal with whatever they throw at them in terms of the football they've got and the direct threat they've got. Um, but I think, I think they'll come close. That first name you mentioned, Adam, Lukaku, what's your assessment of him as, as one who's lined up teams against him? Well, the thing about him is his power. You know, he, and if he gets in behind you, you're not going to catch him. Uh, his, his hold up play is probably his weak area and coming to Manchester is it's definitely an area he needs to improve. But his strength, his goal scoring and particularly on crosses I've always felt he was a threat. The only time really you can gamble with him uh, I think is when, when you're high up the pitch 
he has a tendency to come short and be a little bit lazy in his control and you can nick it off him. And I think that's an area he needs to improve on. But big, powerful man. And, and Manchester United have lost Slatan. You have to remember, he's replacing somebody who was a massive success here. And uh, I think uh, there's huge pressure on him. But he's got the maturity now. He's been at Chelsea, he's been at Everton, done the job at Everton. Uh, and now he needs to step up to, to this stage, which is the biggest stage. Do you think he's ready to fill those shoes, Graham? We'll find out. When you buy a player at a big football club, you're a manager, you buy a big player, or you think he'll be a big player when you're at a big club, you just never know how they're going to react to that jump. With the utmost respect to Everton, this is a level up from Everton. He cannot pick and choose when he's buying at it at Manchester United. You know, every game we've been under the spotlight. Like for argument's sake, when he missed that chance against Real Madrid in midweek, that's highlighted. That would not have been highlighted if he had still been at Everton. You know, he gets one but misses one. We talk about the one he misses. And I, and I just think he's ready for it. 24, I think um, he's no one that anyone would particularly enjoy playing against. Um, but only time will tell if he can make that jump, if he can get himself into, or his brain into a place where every time I'm going out to cross that white line, I have to be bang at it. These supporters demand it. When you play at a club like this, they demand it. It's, this and is I, I the think big also stage. that the, when you're at a big club, the concentration of the other player starts influencing you. And, the, and they're professionalism and their dedication to their trade. He has that great friendship with Pogba, which I think is going to be important because when you look at Man United, they look light on goals to me. And I think those two have got to deliver and they're going to have to put their arm around each other on the odd day and lift each other as well because they'll have some see, downtime. See, when you spend the best part of 100 million quid on each of those players, that's the kind of player you're expecting will be the difference in the big games. They're the ones that will separate the tight games, come up with something special that gets you a goal. And that's the pressure that Lukaku's under. For me, Pogba's still got a long, long way to go for me. But Lukaku certainly has to fill the shoes. You mentioned Ibrahimovic. He scored 28 goals last year. I think the, people don't give him the credit for the season he had last year. I think he was fabulous. So Lukaku's got big shoes to fill. But looking at Pogba there, do you think Matic helps him? Does it free him up a bit? Oh, for sure. And I think... The five goals against his name, Pogba, is definitely because of the position he played last year. He had to protect at times, he had to fill that hole. But Matic just does it automatically. He's the best that I've ever seen in the Premier League uh, in, in the last sort of seven or eight years anyway. When he's played at Chelsea, he's been terrific. He was terrific at Benfica. And now he's come here to do the job. And, I, you know, I'm very, very surprised that Chelsea have let him go. Uh, for whatever reason, he's here. I think Jose must be falling over himself. Well, he he called him the other day the, the perfect signing, Graham. Yeah, I would imagine he doesn't cause you a minute's problem um, when he's around the place. He's consistent. You know, what he does, in that, when you're a central midfield player and you're expected to protect those behind you, you can get attracted to the game. He doesn't do that. You have to be extremely disciplined. He doesn't get forward and sucked into situations where he lives. Those people behind him exposed. He, as Alan said, he's as good as there is around. The, the thing I think Pogba needs to find is that, that kind of Frank Lampard run, which he's now got licence to do with Matic there. He always kind of plays behind. I'd like to see him break, start breaking a little bit beyond the striker. How would you describe... I'd love to ask him what sort of midfield player you are, because I see a, a little bit of everything in Pogba. I'm with you. I think you want him to be more of a Deli Alley type because he's got that athleticism. Well, we'll see today to what, to the box what all impact the time. it has with Matic behind him. But a word on West Ham. Uh, they've made four big signings that all start here today, Alan. Do you think they've bought well, particularly with Javier Hernandez? Well, I'll start with the goalie because I think the biggest signing is the goalie. I mean, we're looking at Hernandez now, and obviously he's a favourite here, and he expect, you know he's going to score goals. And it'd be nice to see Andy Cowell around him at some, in some games, for sure. Um, but they've signed very, very well. And Altovic, uh, Hernandez and Hart, three big, big players. It was, they're on the team sheet. You think Hart's going to be a big player for them? Yeah, I do. I think he's got tremendous experience in the Premier League. I think he come to West Ham, there's no pressure on him. I think he'll, he'll be a big presence in that just room. i tell you who the best thing is well, for his personality. Zabaleta. Oh, you yeah, say that. Well. yeah, he's a real one, and I, and, and I take your point. I think you know when you, you you're not going to win big trophies or do well in this league unless you've got a good goalkeeper. I think um, he will do well. He's got a point to prove, which is always good when you buy someone. Yeah. You've got something to prove to someone. I think Anelcevic is someone that will get us on the edge of our seats today, but will also drop our shoulders in disappointment when he does things. I think um, he, has a, he has added work rate to his game. And Anelcevic, when he first came, struggled around a little bit, but. Last... You, that bit. I like it. We've both been managers. 
that that on the line, you know, waving an arm at his teammates. We will see. Lots to look out for on this uh, final game of what's been a fantastic opening weekend. Last but not least, it's Manchester United against West Ham coming next.